Hey everybody, uh, welcome to day two of our admitted student days. Uh, I appreciate you all taking time out of your schedules once again to join us on a Friday for virtual programming. Uh, my name is Phil Herrenrein and I lead the admissions office here at Villanova Law. Once again, really excited to have you all here with us today. There are going to be other programs that are going to be coming to you after this one. Two more events, actually, a Getting Involved panel and also a Supporting Our Students panel. But this first one today is a special one. Um, the title of this panel is Celebrating Diversity at Villanova Law. And essentially what why this panel means so much to myself, but also to the students that are here speaking today, is because we all come from different backgrounds. We all have different shared and lived experiences is before coming to law school. Um, and it's important to value that, of course, but to be able to um, demonstrate and display those differences while you're here as a student. Um, at Villanova, we are proud of the differences that each member of our community brings to the law school, and that comes in many different shapes and sizes. And so um, today you're going to hear from our students that are leaders on campus about their involvements and their experiences leading affinity groups, but being involved in just a whole host of ways outside of the affinity groups as well. I'm going to turn it over to each of them to introduce themselves. I'm going to ask that you uh, share with everybody your name, where you went to undergrad, your class year, um, maybe what your interests are, like sort of generally speaking, what areas of law you're interested in pursuing, um, and maybe some of the groups that you're representing here today. And then after everybody's finished, I will hand it over to Kat to get some things going in terms of questions. I will say to all of our attendees, the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen is the best way for you all to ask questions to our panelists here today. I'm going to ask the panelists right now to share their email addresses in the chat box. If they can send their email addresses, make sure you're sending it to everyone. Then all of our attendees are going to be able to have your email addresses moving forward and can reach out to you afterwards if they have any questions for you and specific or in particular, um, but to get things going, I'm going to give them a second to put their emails in. Landon's first, Landon's up first. Um, I'm going to let Landon introduce himself first, then we're going to do Kayla, Shri, and then Kat last but not least, because Kat, you know what to do after that. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Landon Holbin. I am a current 2L at Villanova Law. Um, I went to the University of Virginia for undergrad. And I'm currently the president of Outlaw, which is our LGBTQ plus student organization at the law school. Um, I also, I came right to law school out of undergrad, um, so no break in between, but I'm also on the boards of a few other student organizations like the Student Mental Health Society and the Emerging Technology Legal Society. And in terms of interests, um, I'm interested in cybersecurity and data privacy law, um, and will get to pursue that this summer with my summer internship. So I'm excited to get started on that. Hi, everyone. My name is Kayla Martin, and I'm currently A1L. Um, I graduated from the University of Pennsylvania. I also came straight through, so I don't have any prior work experience either. Um, currently, I am interested in criminal law, more so the defense side, um, and will be able to pursue that during the, the summer working at the Public Defender Services in um, D.C. Um, currently, I am a 1L representative for the Black Law Student Association, but I'm also a 1L rep for the Criminal Law Society, and I am also a research assistant for the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Office. Hi everyone, I'm Shree Baljipali and I'm a current 2L. Prior to law school, I graduated from Rutgers University with a degree in chemistry and I had about six years of experience in the pharmaceutical industry uh, as a scientist. So my interests are in health law, IP law. In particular, I'm interested in patent litigation, which is what I get to do at my current externship and over the summer. So um, as far as other groups I'm part of. I'm part of a PULSA. I'm part of the IP Law Society. I'm on the board of the Health Law Society. Yeah. Hey, everyone. I'm Catherine Tui. I am a 2L. I graduated from Purdue University, and it's a school in Indiana, if you haven't heard of it. I am originally from Boston, Massachusetts, and I am the vice president of the Asian American Law Association and the social chair for the Black Law Students Association. And I am interested mostly in tax and sports entertainment law. 
Greg, we'll hear from you really quick with your introduction, and then we'll get started with the question. All right. Hey, I'm Gregory Hill. I'm from originally from Bowie, Maryland, which is the Naval Academy for undergraduate. I'm a 2L, I'm interested in corporate law. I'm uh, the 2L rep for the Student Bar Association. I'm the 2L rep for the uh, Bulls for the Black Law Student Association. I also am in some of the other groups, such as the Pulsa and Mulsa. And then I, I like to give one dab on some other groups to get an idea of what every, every, what's going on in, within the school. Awesome. So first question for everyone here, how would you describe the mission of your various organizations and groups that you're part of? We'll just do it in the order that we did introduction. So we'll start with Landon. Okay, yeah. So for me, I would say the mission of Outlaw is really, you know, first and foremost, it's a community organization. We're trying to create a space for um, LGBTQ people in the law school um, to really just have connections with one another and to, because sometimes I think with law school, um, it can you, can, you can get sort of pulled into your academics, which is great amazing but um i really do think sometimes those community organizations do a lot of work to make sure everyone still feels like they're part of a group and have somewhere to go so that these organizations um can keep putting on events that sort of um, bring all those people together and so for us it's really about just making a space for new students especially to come into the school and all of those concerns um, and imposter syndrome and everything that they may be experiencing can hopefully get washed away as quickly as possible and that we can really make sure that everyone's feeling welcome um, and seen at the law school. Um, in terms of BALSA and Kat and Greg could also jump on this too. Um, I know we foster the professional law among students who are um, who are from a Black background, as well as individuals who are interested in um, problems facing, problems the Black community faces currently legally. Um, we also strive to um, have a legal influence through the community um, by having like various professional, social, and community activities during um, the school year. Um, yeah. So for Pulsa, our main goal is to connect students with an Asian American Pacific Islander background with each other and with alumni. And like Landon and Caitlin said, it's just a good way to connect people with other students that have a similar background or other students that are interested in knowing more about the Asian community. We were able to host events for holidays such as Diwali or Lunar New Year. So it's just a really good organization to feel like you belong to a community. Uh, so I'm also, I forgot to mention, I'm also part of the Military Invest Society. I'm the uh, secretary for that. So as far as diversity with that um, and being also like, just picking up what everybody said, it's just to get um, veterans and people who are actually interested in going to the JAG or other support for the military to get acclimated within the community. I know people who have family members who are, they might not necessarily be interested in becoming a JAG or or anything in particular with the military, but they have family, so they want to show their support. So it's about um, bringing all these people together to, one, get involved with the other organizations and just have a presence in the school in the safe place. Just to echo what Kayla and Shree said, Bolsa and Impulse are just great organizations that are meant to help create community on campus. I know that's a really big reason why I became so involved in each of those groups, and it's where a lot of my great friends have come from. And so it's just a good place to find your home, especially in a very stressful environment as law school can be. And it's a great place to just meet awesome people. But it's also a really good place to start networking. And so Bolsa and Apulsa have really large networks within not only Philadelphia, but the greater Pennsylvania area and a bunch of other states as well. So it's a great way to just slowly get into the networking phase of life if you're K through JD like Landon and I are, or if you're just really into meeting new people and those who are already in the workforce, these kinds of organizations really help you with that. And so on campus, there are also other organizations like the Women's Law Caucus, there's the First Generation Lawyers, there's the parents and non-traditional groups. And so all of these other organizations are also geared towards creating a home, creating community, and just helping you find your niche. So 
moving on to the next question. Do you guys in your groups have any formal or informal mentorship programs for your um, members? Um, yeah, so we usually do have um, a sort of, I, I guess I would call it a formal mentorship program and that we actually go through and match first years um, with um, upperclassmen. Um, and so that's something, so we do spring elections. So I actually just got started this spring being the president of Outlaw. And so that's something that had sort of died off a little bit in the last year or so. And so it's something I'm currently working on sort of bringing back for our incoming um, class of 1Ls that will come in in August. So hopefully. Balsa also has a mentorship program. Um, I wasn't on the board yet when we were paired as a 1L, but from my experience, I currently have a 3L a mentor who is also a part of Balsa. And she's been great. Um, they really are helpful in, in terms of giving out outlines or advice on professors and just advice on how to uh, navigate the law school space. Apulsa also has a mentorship program. We also are in the process of getting in contact with more alumni so we can reach out to them. We have our outline bank. So we've been doing a lot to help the 1Ls. And I know when I was a 1L, I had an Apulsa mentor and she was amazing. And she really helped me navigate law school when I was starting out. Yeah, so picking back in off of what Kayla said, Balsa has a, a, a mentor program and also so for Balsa, they have the Latin American Law Student Association, they have a mentor program too, with the same thing where they'll pair you with uh, an alumni. And then there's, I know we're going to get into it later, but there's the uh, Minority Alumni uh, Association Society where they also offer mentorship. Yeah, just to echo what everyone's saying, Apulsa and Bolsa are also great mentorship programs. I know usually the way that we kind of pair people is we have people fill out information forms. And from there, it's kind of like, do you guys have the same interest in the sense of law? Or if the incoming 1Ls don't really know what they want to practice yet, where are you from? What kind of shows do you like to watch? What books? Are we into celebrity gossip like Selena Gomez, Hailey Bieber? What do we like to talk about? And so all of that kind of stuff is really how we pair everyone to really make sure you guys have the most positive and helpful mentorship that you can. But also that doesn't defer you from ever reaching out to other people and creating informal mentorships as well, or just friendships with other upperclassmen as well. And so I know also through Villanova itself, we do have a mentorship program with um, graduated students and working individuals. And so I know I have a mentor who graduated, I believe in maybe 2018, something like that. And she's a practicing attorney in the area. And so it's really great to just learn from somebody already in the field. Like I'm asking bar questions. What do I have to look forward to? So things like that are really important. And so if you have a chance to join a mentorship program, I highly recommend it. And so I know this may not be applicable to all the groups here, but if anyone in the group personally has attended any minority association or minority alumni society events or your organization is involved in that, would you be able to speak on it? So I can do this. So um, every Monday they have, or not every Monday, once a month they have Mass Mondays. That's when the uh, the Minority Alumni Society alumni will come, and you know it's usually at the end of the day from about six to eight p.m. Sometimes it lasts longer. They'll bring food, and uh, different alumni from from backgrounds will come, and they're just available to talk to anybody. You know, just about any questions you have, mostly with if there's any advice you need for school. Um, and how are things going with the job, uh, job search, things of that nature. So we just had one. If it wasn't last week, it was a week before. And um, yeah, it was just real cool just learning. Uh, one of the alumni I talked to was Brian Raymond. Uh, he's very active in giving back to the school or coming back and speaking to students at the school. He has his own practice. So it was just cool just to, you know, I had avoid, not necessarily frustrations, but I was just talking about, you know, the job search, trying to get things done. So um connected with him and it was just another way of networking you know I handed off my uh my resume to him and he was able to get me in touch with a few people so you just you just never know what can come of those opportunities and you just things that 
um, they they learn they pass they're passing that knowledge off to you that could help you in progression. And that's, those are some of the things I encourage uh, some of the one L's to do. I, I saw I've seen a at least more so in the fall. I saw a lot a good amount of one L's going to those things. That's good because it's like you know you hear one thing from current students, but when you hear from people who graduated and they went through that whole process, it gives a different perspective because they're like, well, no, this is what worked, you know, as opposed to someone who's going through it. You might, this is like, all right, this is the successful route that we went. So. And on terms of just being a research assistant for the diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, we also have worked with um, the Minority Alumni Society. And we just had a panel um, a couple, or maybe a month ago, where they came in and um, acted out scenarios about microaggressions and just ways to for diverse people to um, address and combat these like aggressions or just things that kind of hurt diverse um, lawyers in the work field and how to uh, um, combat that. And just it was really interesting to kind of get a sense of how they would respond to different scenarios, especially because they've been in the legal field for um, quite some time. Um, so that was really good. And in terms of just BALSA as well, they do come to a lot of our networking events. I know we had our 50th anniversary where they most of them attended. Um, we also had our fashion show where we had a networking event afterwards. And we did um, kind of like speed dating and some of the um, people in the alumni society came and joined that speed dating round with us. So I know for APABA and SABA, which is the South Asian Bar Association, they have events throughout the year in Philadelphia. So I've been to a few of those. And I just want to say that you're not limited to just, if you're Asian American, you don't just have to go to APABA or SABA's events. You are free to attend any event across the board. And it's really good to get to know other lawyers and with other um, backgrounds than yourself. So definitely attend as many events as you can. Yeah. And I mean, from Outlaw's perspective, um, that's something I've sort of been working on the last couple of months um, is sort of getting more connected. Of course, yeah, we participate in the mentorship program, like Greg mentioned earlier, um, and that's been great. Um, I have a mentor through that who's been wonderful. Um, but then in terms of events and whatnot, um, we've got something coming up soon that we've sort of worked on with the Minority Alumni Society as well. And so starting to get more connected there as well. Great, thank you guys. So moving on, we're gonna talk about um, some of the normal events and different kinds of panels that you guys have hosted this year or in the past and other events within campus that you believe celebrate diversity. Yeah, so I can just get started here. So for Outlaw, um, just sort of in the recent past, um, last semester, we did a few things. Um, we like to co-sponsor with a lot of groups if we can to sort of try to bring together as many people with as many varied interests as we can. And so we did panels on mental health with the Student Mental Health Society, which I'm on the board for as well. So that makes planning easy. Um, and then we also did um, a panel on being LGBTQ in the law, just in general, you know, sort of trying to get practitioners in who can talk about their experiences um, in the law. And then this semester, um, we co-sponsored an event with BALSA for Black History Month, sort of just looking at celebrating Black LGBTQ plus Americans um, and sort of educating students a bit on some of those people that they might not know too much about. And then we've actually got a lot coming up um, in the next month. And so just next week, we're sort of, we tend to sort of, some of our panels and events and whatnot are influenced sort of by the state of the law in the U.S. And so right now we've sort of been shift shifting our focus a lot to focus on the struggles of transgender Americans and sort of everything that's going on right now. And so we've got a great event um, next week um, sort of with bringing in an expert um, who's sort of working on that um, as we speak and um, defending trans rights. And then we've got a 
uh, supply drive coming up for one of the LGBTQ youth centers um, in Philadelphia that we're doing in coordination with the outlaws from Drexel, Penn, Temple, Rutgers, um, sort of everyone. And so that's exciting to get to work with um, all the other schools on that. Um, and then we actually have sort of a, we got together a more of a school sponsored event. That's um, a trans allyship training that we're doing one evening um, in April. And so I'm really excited that we got a little bit more involvement um, from the school itself and sort of getting that together. Um, so yeah, exciting. Uh, I can speak on BALSA's events geared towards the 1Ls. Um, so I know in the fall semester and spring semester, we've had a 1L temperature check where 1Ls can just come in, talk to uh, the 2L, 3L BALSA members about classes, how classes are going, how to outline, how to um, study for finals, just anything you can possibly think of has been brought up to the upperclassmen just about um you know, being a 1L, being a Black 1L, and just, you know, navigating the law school space. We've also had a 1L practice midterm. I think the test was a crim law test just to help us get accustomed to how finals would go during the fall semester. And we also had an event about how to outline for 1Ls because outlining is a new thing. A lot of people didn't do during undergrad years. So um, just learning how to outline and how to prepare for finals is really helpful that BALSA has done for the one else. Yeah, so a BALSA, the two main events that we've had this year were for Diwali and then Chinese New Year. And it was a great opportunity for us to share a piece of our culture with the greater law school community. For one else, though, we've also had one L check-ins, which is very similar to probably what the temperature check with BALSA was, where we just talked to them about outlining how to prepare for finals. We also hosted our own practice mock finals. So we've definitely been checking in with the one else a lot this year. Additionally, for BALSA, uh, during Black History Month, there's a lot of different events. There's some speakers and things of that nature. Um, in the past, we didn't do it this year, but last year we had a game night, and then there's also Super Bowl parties, a Super Bowl party. I think the windows did a Super Bowl party, but uh, as a group, there's a Super Bowl party. Um, for the military and vets, uh, we have we have a lot of the, so I said JAG earlier, that's the Judge Advocate General, so that's the military's versions of, of lawyers. Um, we have a lot of speakers from the different services come to speak to students. And then um, the Law Review Symposium had had a military theme speaker or event this year. So after that, we hosted a networking event with some of the uh, lawyers. Um, for LOLSA, LOLSA did a bingo night. Um, I went to that, that was cool. And then um, they had some other speakers and alumni events. I know they, they there was a, there was a uh, there was an event for uh, people with Hispanic heritage where they went and talked to some of the judges there. Um, I, I can't remember which court, but I know it was one of the courts. Um, additionally, for military and veterans, we did a pull up comp. We do a physical challenge. We try and do one at least one per semester. So it was uh, real good. It was a, a pull up competition. It was basically fundraising. We were trying to reach a goal of about a thousand pull ups between e combined with everybody. So. The uh, that some of the professors got involved. They for the I know two two of the one L sections at least um, came help support and they did their pull ups. Um, this next month we're doing a bike ride competition. We're gonna have four teams with the goal of trying to see who can bike the most amount of mileage on of stationary bikes inside the law school. Um, between there's gonna be a, a a faculty team, the military invest team, and then two other teams. Then we also do things with uh, just all the groups. Like I said, we do mental health checks with the uh, Mental Health Society. Just to talk a little bit more about what Apulsa has done as well. So we did um, have a collaboration with the Muslim Law Society last semester, where we did a great event where we heard from a lot of South Asian law students, or excuse me, students that went to Villanova and have since graduated. And they were just great to hear from, to hear about a South Asian perspective on just the law field and just 
their experience at Villanova and their experience in the world. So it was a great time to just hear from a lot of differing Asian communities. And within Impulse, we really try to celebrate different Asian communities. As we know, there's a lot of different Asians that you can come from. And so we try our best to really separate the cultures and try to make everyone feel seen and heard and give everyone a voice. And so this semester, we are actually going to be hosting our first Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month event. And so we're really excited to just, get, again, give people more voice and more perspective. So we're really excited and hopefully we'll have a lot of uh, students come to that and maybe admitted students can attend as well. So we will let you know on that. And so moving on, how do you guys feel your experiences have been as a diverse or non-traditional student at Villanova? And have you had any um, hardships that you faced or any resources, resources that you've turned to to kind of help you in your journey? I mean, yeah, so I mean, overall, um, I would say I've had a relatively positive experience at Villanova. Um, and so I think, you know, coming in, um, I had a lot of concerns. I remember as a an, an admitted student um, emailing the former president of Outlaw with probably the longest email they had ever received of questions and concerns that I had just because I wasn't sure what coming to a Catholic university for law school was going to be like as a member of the LGBTQ community. And so I was really lucky early on to meet a lot of people who were in Outlaw and sort of get that start getting their impressions and um pretty quickly i realized that the community was overall pretty supportive um, of both lgbtq students and of outlaw as a student organization and i think you know as time went on i sort of you know that's not to say that there haven't been times when like you know there were either microaggressions or something else that was coming, whether it was from a faculty member or something. Um, and I think what really made me feel a lot more comfortable and a lot more like part of the community at Villanova was seeing how my classmates who weren't members of the LGBT community react to things and how they sort of come up to support. Um, last semester, Outlaw held a couple of sort of town hall style forums. And it was, I was really shocked every time about how many people showed up to those that weren't members of the LGBTQ community and were just allies. And I think that really did a lot personally to um, make me feel a lot more comfortable at Villanova. So overall, it's been a pretty good experience. I would also say I've had a good experience so far. I also came straight through and UPenn is also PWI. So I've learned how to, you know, navigate that kind of system. So coming to Nova wasn't really any different for me, but I did come to Admitted Students Day um, in April last year. And the first question I asked Kevin, the SBA president was, how does it feel to be Black at Nova? And just by asking him that question and just seeing how, um, Balsa interacts with people and how Balsa also just interacts with their members made me feel really comfortable. And just knowing that I have people I can go to when things do get hard or when I am struggling, um, just knowing that I do have a support system was really nice knowing coming into Nova, even before actually like starting um, classes. Yeah, so I think I had a slightly different experience, not at NOVA, but prior to NOVA, I went to Rutgers University, which is slightly more diverse um, in terms of South Asian students, especially. And I worked in sort of an industry that felt represented by South Asian students. So I was kind of scared coming in to, uh, coming to Villanova, but I think the student body has been very supportive. The faculty, I've had so many professors that put me in touch with other lawyers that could relate to my circumstances and that were able to guide me with the questions I've had. And I, it, it's just been a completely positive experience so far. And the fears I had coming in just dissipated very quickly. Kat, did you have anything you wanted to add? 
Yeah, just really quick. Um, again, Bolsa and Apulsa were just great people and resources for me to come into the school with. And so coming from Purdue University, which is also a PWI, I'm used to a lesser amount of minority students on the campus, but they coming into the school, they didn't make me feel like it was different. No one that I have am associated with has made me feel as this, I'm not worthy or I have had a different experience than them. Villanova as a whole has been really welcoming, but Bolsa and Impulsa especially have just really made this my home. And I'm just really glad that I was able to find them so quickly in my law school journey. And also coming straight from K through JD, I don't have as much work experience as some of the other students might have. And so it's definitely been a struggle kind of to play catch up a little bit because we have some students who are, who are a bit older. And so they've had a lot of work. They, they really know what they wanted to do. And it took me a little bit to figure out exactly what niche I want to work in. And so working just with Bolsa and Pulsa and with our faculty members as well have really helped me find my nice area of law that I would love to work in in the future but also being a first generation law student. I haven't had anyone in the family that's been to law school. We don't really have lawyers in the family at all, no friends or family members like that. And so it's kind of been an adjustment having to learn the legalese. I, I came into law school not knowing what an outline was. And so that was the first question I asked um, during orientation. I said, what is an outline? Why do I need one? Because coming from undergrad, like Kayla said, you don't really make outlines. You maybe make a study guide or you just call it a day and it's all vibes on the exam, but law school, you can't really do that. And so it was definitely difficult to learn just kind of adjusting on terminology, but also the different ways of studying because law textbooks are a lot different than undergrad textbooks. And so, especially with all the different minority groups on campus, I was really able to acclimate and succeed in law school. I'm going to just jump in really quickly and maybe ask a couple quick questions, but I also want to promote to our attendees that you all should be definitely throwing in questions into the chat box as well. There are a couple in there, but um, we're going to stop asking questions soon, or at least I will, and I think that we want to hear from you all, um, and that'll probably be a nice way for our students to interact with you with you moving forward. Um, a couple of really quick questions to sort of get our part of things done here, and I'll just run through. I'll call on your name so you can tell me what your like answer would be. Um, people oftentimes will ask about law school classes and things that you've enjoyed taking, maybe if it's a professor and a class, or maybe it's a class and separately a professor. Um, Kayla's at a disadvantage because she's only had one semester of classes and she's in her second semester, but still, Kayla, you can say something, right? So what we'll do is I'll start um, just calling out names and just unmute yourself and, and shout out an answer. Um, Greg. I'm sorry, I was typing a response to, a to one of the questions. <laughs> Favorite class, Greg, favorite professor. Favorite class, favorite professor, um, property with uh, Professor Caudill. Got it. And also I was just gonna say the questions that are in the Q&A box, y'all can leave them there because we'll just answer them live. So that's totally fine. Um, how about you, Shree? It's a tie between Civ Pro with Professor Samahan or IP with Professor Rish. Landon. Um, it's actually a seminar I'm in right now with Professor Frischman um, on uh, economics, technology, and privacy law. How about you, Kayla? I would have to say civil procedure with Ravenel or criminal law with Ravid. Pat? Introduction to federal taxation with Professor Book. Awesome. That one actually came up yesterday a few times, Kat. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask this question here because I know that some of our attendees are obviously in the process of determining where they're going to go to law school this fall. And so um, this answer doesn't have to be long winded for each of you, but um, I'm just going to say a statement and then you can respond accordingly with whatever comes to mind first. OK, and we'll start with Landon. The statement or I guess the question is, why Villanova? Um, so, I mean, beyond the obvious sort of financial considerations that I had for every school I was looking at, um, I really enjoyed the admissions process at Villanova and really felt like I was given all the time I needed and all of my questions were being answered. And it was sort of unique to each um, admitted student. And so that really put them above a lot of other schools. What about you, Greg? I went to be in, in the mid-Atlantic region after law school. So this is the reputation Villanova has was uh, good for me. Kat? 
I would say also for me, it was the admissions process. I, throughout the whole process, I really felt like I was more than just a number. I was someone that they really wanted at this school, especially because I remember receiving a voicemail when I got my introduction, when, when I got my acceptance and they were telling me different things that they liked about my personal statement. And that really just made me feel like, wow, these people read what I actually poured my heart into and they really made me feel like I could be part of Villanova and I'd be a great fit. And so that really just made me put them at the top of my list. Of course we read your application, Kat. <laughs> um, Kayla. Not to say that people don't, but you guys just really put a lot of heart into it. And I felt that. I appreciate um, it. So one, my sister is currently a senior at Nova and she absolutely loves it. I don't ever hear anything bad come out her mouth from her experience, at least, and that played a really big role and I would say the admissions process also was really like Kat said I thought it was it was just great and made me feel like welcomed and that they actually cared that someone like me was coming to their school I'm gonna make sure Shree you can't say the admissions process okay you gotta say something different <laughs> that's not fair but I mean for me I grew up about 30 minutes from Villanova. I'm from South Jersey. So it's local financial considerations. It just made sense. But also the admissions process was amazing. Just... You guys are honest. Here, I can I can add something more. So it's not just admissions process. Um, I always knew that in some way I would want to work in the entertainment field. And so Villanova has a great sports and entertainment program here. If you're really into that, come check it out. Thanks, Kat. Um, so there are questions coming into the Q&A box. I want to give you all the opportunity to interact with some of our attendees by answering those questions. So um, let me start with the first one here. I'm going to throw it out, but only one or two of you need to answer. If somebody needs to throw on something else, feel free to do so. The first question says, how was it getting acclimated at Villanova Law being someone from a diverse background? Um, I'll answer that. There's also another question similar to that, which if Kat and Kayla uh, see it um but it, it was really for me at least I'm used to being in diverse background so it wasn't at least for me it wasn't anything I didn't I hadn't seen before so it's just more so about you know talking to I'm social so you know talking to your different classmates and seeing if there are differences seeing what those differences are because it helps you learn a different pers perspective helps you prepare you know for your how you can prepare an argument in your classes or in your essays and see how different people think. But you know, when my classmates are welcoming, um, they ask we we I talk to them, I hang out with some of them after school, you know. Okay. So it's just more about the more open you are, the more open your people will be for you. And I think that applies everywhere. Yeah, Kat, Kayla, I don't know if you all can see that question that was posed by Abby in the QA box, but it says, um, in particular, um, Kayla and Kat, you mentioned going to a PWI for undergrad. I currently attend Villanova, which is the PWI. I was wondering if there was anything unexpected that came up during the transition from an undergraduate institution that's predominantly white to a law school that's the same. Um, I can start. I think not really, just because I, you know, came straight through. So I was I knew what I expected. I will just say the numbers do diminish diminish that you at a PWI undergrad and there's a lot of people and you come to law school and there's about 160 people per year section and those numbers do get a lot smaller but as we have our student orgs and my section has also just been really welcoming I do think it's been a really good transition for me so far I like um like Greg says, just being open to, you know, talking, meeting new people um, kind of makes the transition a lot easier. Yeah, I would say the same as Kayla. It definitely just, it feels a little bit smaller because I know at Purdue, we're a group of 60,000 students and then coming to Villanova where it's a max of about maybe 400. It definitely, you can see it a lot more than maybe you would have realized in undergrad, but it doesn't feel any different. Again, as long as you're just ready and out there to make friends and just, you know, be social, you'll you'll fit just in and you won't feel a difference. But I think probably the biggest unexpected transition that I had was there's a lot of people here that have lawyers as parents. And that was very unexpected for me. I would be talking to someone and they would mention how their dad was an, a big IP lawyer in like North Carolina. And I was like, 
oh, that's unexpected. I was like, that's super fun for you. Or people have already had law internships because, you know, they have connections prior to that because their parents are in the legal field. So they kind of already know what they want to do. And so it felt very interesting for people to be so much more sure of the field than I was at the time. But at the same time, people are in different phases of life. You'll get there when you get there. Sorry, I just want to also just quickly add, I'm also a first generation law student. So I would say coming into law school, no one else in my immediate family went to law school. So it's not like I can ask them, oh, how to do this or that. It's more so figuring it out by myself. So I would say that was probably one of the hardest things. Yeah, I think Kat hinted at this just now, and I, I said it beforehand, I think in some of our other panels, um, what's I think helpful in, in sort of an equalizing way is that even if your parents or even if your siblings or aunts and uncles or lawyers, when you start law school on day one of 1L year, they're not by your side in class with you and they're not sitting down with you taking finals. And so for what it's worth, I was a first generation student of color at Villanova many years ago, and things are looking much better, I'll be honest with you all on campus as compared to when I was a student. But I will say um, that that sort of gave me a sense of calm and a sense of at least, you know, feeling confident in my abilities, knowing that they're coming here, they're starting out on day one. And let's say if we're starting from point zero, we're all working towards the final goal, which is finals, but nobody's taking that test for them and their siblings that maybe graduated five years ago or their parents that maybe graduated from law school 20 years ago, um, that's not necessarily as much of a benefit um, in the classroom, right, as they might make it seem. Um, they may have connections outside of the classroom, and there's no doubt about that, but putting your head down, studying, getting your work done, being social, like Greg said, and Kat, all these individuals put themselves out there to make sure that they set themselves up for the opportunities that they've been able to um, take advantage of at the law school. They really put in the work, and so I commend them, honestly, all for that. Um, really quickly, there's a question that Greg answered already that I want to just make note of. So somebody asked if there's a first generation group and a group for women. So yes, um, outside of the Black Law Students Association here today, the Asian and Pacific American outlaw the military and vets, we have a first generation lawyers group. We have a women's law caucus. We have a Latin American Law Students Association. We have a um, parent and non-traditional student group. And then there are, of course, groups that relate to practice areas, groups that relate to religious backgrounds, political ideologies. Um, so there's a whole host of groups on campus. And then somebody else asked about the possibility of creating groups. And so, yes, there's a formalized process you go through with the student government here at the law school. But there are groups that come and go, right, in terms of interest. And so some groups might be more dormant one year. Some groups might be more um, active one year. So, yes, you can, of course, do that as well. Next question here, let's see, says, do you all find that the overall Villanova community is just as welcoming as the communities that are created through your respective organizations? And if one or two of you want to answer that, that'd be great, because we're going to have to stop in maybe like the next seven or eight minutes, and I want to get through as many of these as we can. I want to say yes, um, for me in particular. I have friends that are from all kinds of affinity groups and they've all showed up to events for my affinity groups and they've supported my interests and my career goals just as I support theirs. And it it's a good community for that. I will yeah. say also the faculty members, sorry, Landon, I, you know, going to your professors during their office hours, I love to just talk about anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be about what you learned in that class. Um, like Ravine, one of my favorite crim professors, I'll just go into his office now. I don't have him, but I'll go in and say hi and just talk and catch up with him. So faculty is also a big um, part of the welcoming here at NOVA. Yeah, and I would just say that um, it, yeah, something that the Villanova community does really well is especially all the affinity groups supporting one another and sort of coordinating and making sure that they're all sharing events from the other groups. And once that happens, that's quite a bit of the student population that's getting to see and attend those events. And so that makes everything um, quite a bit better, I think. Greg, I'm going to come to you for this question in particular, because you mentioned earlier that you're invested, of course, in a lot of different groups on campus. You should see Greg. He's everywhere, I feel like, all the time. Um, but Greg, the question says, as a leader of multiple groups, how do you find balance between being a leader, a student, and then maintaining mental health um, as a law school student? 
So yes, that's definitely have, making sure you're, you keep in your schedule, you know, put everything in a calendar so that one, you can, if you know one of your groups has an event that you're, you speak, you talk to your, another group that you're part of and say, hey, can we not have this event on the same day? Because, you know, I know that I want to go to this and I know other students would want to, are interested in both. So let's try and um, sort that out. And sometimes it's not able to be done, but that's fine. But as far as like studying, it's just, you gotta be on top of things. Uh, it's it's stressful at times, but at the same time, you knowing that you'll get through it, and then just working with your classmates. Some of your classmates know that you're busy. That, like for me, they know I'm busy with doing stuff. So relying on them, say, hey, could you help me out with this? Or you know, just being open to support. Um, it's it's just that's the only way to say it. Just being on, making sure you're on top of everything. It's like adulting, right? Time management, making sure that you have everything in your calendar, your notes on your iPhone or whatever, right? Um, Kat, you mentioned being first-generation law. Question says, what advice do you have for someone that's going to be a first-generation law student? Yeah, my advice would be don't be afraid to ask for help. I know that might be a, a little issue for some people who really want to, you know, do this on their own and really succeed, which I commend because I am one of those individuals. I hate asking for help, but if I don't know a word, I'm going to raise my hand in class and be like, what does this mean? So don't be embarrassed when you don't know information because there might be other students out there who also don't know, but just don't want to speak up. And so going to office hours, really creating a study group, having friends and other students that you feel like you can go to to really help you understand material everyone's here to help you and everyone's here to succeed especially the faculty members they really want to make sure you do well not only in class but in your law career and so making friends with the faculty or just you know having some nice office hours every now and then would is really going to take you a long way okay we're going to get through a couple questions here but i'm going to quickly post the link to the next zoom in the chat box so that those of you that are on here right now will have it moving forward the next panel is called supporting our students and just as a quick i guess overview there are going to be individuals there that are representing the dei office financial aid um, student affairs and then also academic success there's also going to be a student speaking on that panel as well so definitely a good one to catch and then the last one later today which we'll share the link for um, in the next panel but you all you all have the link to our website as well and I can share that here too uh, it's going to be a panel about getting involved so that's going to be about journals moot court trial teams student government all of the above how do you balance involvements like these students are doing um, okay, let's get back into it. Landon, question says, as someone that visually and outwardly expresses myself as LGBTQ, is there a certain dress code for campus and classes that includes any gender or binary regulations? Uh, short answer, no. Um, and I would also just say that that's one of those things where, you know, I have not found that the community is not supportive of anyone who wants to express themselves in any way. And so, um, yeah, don't ever let anyone tell you you can't wear something. Um, and so, yeah, so short answer, no, there's not any sort of binary code. I feel like we'll have students that come to the school that are wearing khakis and button ups. We'll have students that come to the school that are wearing sweatpants and sweatshirts, people that come to the law school wearing flip flops and shorts and tanks. It really is what you're most comfortable in. Um, and that's the attire you should be wearing, right? Because law school is challenging in and of itself. Having to worry about looking a certain way or dressing a certain way should not be something that you're you're worried about or stressed over. Um, this next question says, if you could describe your experience at Villanova thus far in one word, what would it be? Okay, so think for like two seconds. <laughs> and then, Kayla, I'm coming to you first for this one. How would you describe your experience thus far in one word? I would say lovely. Shri. I would say enlightening. Greg. School. Kat. Transformative. Landon. Opportunity. Awesome. Um, somebody asked about joining more than one group, and if you think there's a benefit to doing that, not that I should be the one answering it, but I'm just going to jump in really quickly for the sake of getting through this question. All of the people here on this call are the member, are members and leaders of multiple groups on campus. Um, it's definitely encouraged for you to join the groups that you're very passionate about, potentially even becoming a leader in those groups. Um, the benefit is that, of course, they're coming from different angles. So like Kat said, right, it could be the Black Law Students Association, but it could also be a PALSA, right? And um, 
it, it could be because Kat identifies with both of those groups, but at the same time, she might be a part of the first generation group. She might say, I might be interested in entertainment. So she might be a part of the entertainment and media law society, right? And there are going to be different programs hosted by each of those groups that will relate to what she's interested in pursuing and what might be a benefit and interest to her in terms of finding community, um, but also professional development and career exploration. So I, maybe Kat can nod if I said that right, or maybe kind of <laughs> thumbs up. There we go. Um, somebody want to throw out a quick answer to this one. Do you feel the environment is collegial? Uh, yeah, I think the environment is really collegial. I had a student email, an admitted student email me a couple of weeks ago and asked that same question about whether I thought it was a hyper competitive environment, like they've heard some law schools are. I personally have never felt that um, at all at Villanova. And to me, everyone's really supportive of one another and knows that it's challenging for everyone, no matter how well you're doing, it's still going to be hard. Um, and so I've never found it to be anything but collegial. Can somebody speak a little bit to the question says, how diverse would you describe the faculty? Can somebody speak to maybe that aspect, but also the support from faculty as well? I would say my experience with the faculty has been pretty diverse. I think everyone really does come from not only different ethnicities, but also different just life backgrounds. And so that brings a lot of different experiences into the classroom and ways that they can help teach you in very different ways. Um, I know one professor I have, Professor um, Sam Mahan right now, he is just very aware that everyone comes from different backgrounds, but also that everyone thinks differently. And so it, you may not be outwardly diverse, you may be internally diverse, you may think in a lot of different ways than other people do. And so he really tries his best to gear his teaching to different ways that people would think. And so he'll, he has actually a poll that he puts out in the beginning of class for everyone to send him about what is the best way that you learn, because he wants to help you learn your best way. So they're just trying to be diverse in not only their faculty, but their teaching styles as well. Thanks, Scott. That's really helpful. Um, so time's coming near uh, to the end of the panel. I do want to thank each of our panelists for taking time to share with our attendees. Uh, as I mentioned beforehand, they shared their email addresses with you all earlier. And I know for a fact that they're more than willing to answer any of your questions moving forward. Um, they're, they're some of the best that we have at Villanova Law. And so I thank you all for joining. I thank our attendees for joining. And hopefully we'll see some of you, uh, our attendees, on the next panel. Um, but to our, our panelists, um, have a great weekend. Thank you all so much for joining.